What it do, son? This week we getting royally f***ed with the Game of Thrones by George R.R. R. Martin. Man, this is gonna be a bitch. So this book split up into a bunch of different narratives. Each chapter is told from the perspective of one of the main characters, like Ned, Daenerys, Jon, Arya. I could go on, player, but I'ma break down this bad boy by getting all geographical on your asses. One plot taking place on the west side, one on the east side, and the other up at a big ass ice wall up in the north. We'll get to that later. But for now, let's see what's going down over here. Ned Stark is the top dog of a hood called Winterfell, the swollest kingdom in the north. After taking care of some brother who couldn't keep his word, Ned starts trucking it back to Winterfell, but before he get there, he say, Shit, man, I'm gonna wrap them Stark colors and adopt some of these dire wolves right here. So he get a dire wolf for every child he got. His three legit sons, Rob, Bran, and Rickon, his two daughters, Arya and Sansa, and his bastard love child, Jon Snow. You know, the pretty one. So old Ned ready to chillax back at his crib when the king, Robert Baratheon, swang in the town, and Ned be like, oh shit, brother, what you doing in my hood? The king like, son, you heard the news? My right-hand man, John Aaron, just got murked, and ain't nobody know why. Ned like, no sh word. You gonna get my back and be my new advisor? Man, that ain't really my style. But when Ned's woman, Catelyn, get word from her sister, Lysa, that it was Robert's queen and her fam, the Lannisters, that were behind the hit, Ned like, Fuck it, let's do this, king. Now, the Lannisters be another one of the great crews of the Seven Kingdoms. King Robert is married to Cersei Lannister, and her twin bro, Jaime Lannister, is supposed to protect the king in case anyone try to step. Later, Ned's boy Bran just minding his own business when, ugh, shorty walk in on Cersei getting some of that bro sauce from Jamie. Now that ain't right. They gotta make sure Bran don't snitch, so they toss his little ass out a window. Now he ain't dead, but dog is f***ed up and don't remember nothing. So Ned heads to King's Landing with his two girls, Sansa and Arya. Joffrey, the 12-year-old son of the king and Sansa's future man, is always talking smack and trying to star sh when he f with little Arya though, Shorty show him what's up. Arya's dire wolf gets all up on that hater, and Arya not only swipes his blade, but throws it in the damn river. Joffrey whines like a little bitch, and Sansa's dire wolf gets wrecked by the queen, since Arya's already skipped town. Things between the Starks and the Lannisters ain't looking so good. Back in Winterfell, some hood ass brother try to ice little Bran while he's snoozing. So Catelyn head to King's Landing to tell Ned what went down. Ned hook up with Varys, the master of secrets, and the king's shiesty ass advisor, Peter Baelish, who like, hey, psst, that knife belonged to Tyrion Lannister, the little dwarf brother to Cersei and Jaime. So Catelyn hits up her sister Lysa and puts Tyrion on lockdown in her crib. Tyrion ain't there long, though. Brother shakes them haters off after some gangster named Bronn wins his freedom by wrecking some fool. Eventually, Ned figure out the secret that put John Aaron in the dirt. Joffrey ain't even the king's legit son. He the inbred love child of Cersei and Jaime Lannister. Ugh! That mean he ain't got no right to the crown. When Cersei realized what Ned know, she like, damn, I gotta get that crown on Joffrey's head before the word gets out. So girl plots on her hubby, and King Robert gets ganked in a hunting accident. Now that he did, Ned grabs Peter Baelish to say, dog, I need some thugs to get my back while I challenge Joffrey's claim to the throne. Baelish like, show thing, blood, I got you. But Baelish betrays him, Joffrey becomes king, and slices Ned's damn head off. Ice cold. When Ned's oldest boy Rob hear his daddy been done dirty, he start building a fat crew of Northerners. After making the Lannister army his bitch, everybody start calling him the King of the North. Swag. Alright, so this is what we got going on on this big ice cube up in the north called the Wall, which keep out these savage humans called wildlings and whatever the hell other shit out there from messing with the Seven Kingdoms. Ned's bastard, Jon Snow, grinding as a man of the Night's Watch, which basically is a crew of virgins who devote their lives to guarding the Wall. Jon always looking out for this fat ass bro named Samwell. He a nice dude and all, but dude can't do shit with the sword. Later, John find out that some of his Night's nice Watch homies got smoked in combat and now they been going all thrill up in here. They straight up become crazy undead hustlers called Others. So when these haters try to throw down, John saves the Lord Commander from getting wrecked. When John get word that his daddy been murked, he try to join his bro Rob in a good fight, but after some Night Watch big dogs tell him he best pick duty over love, he just like, man, f 
pocket. So John packs up them nuts and stays a man in the Night's Watch. On the east side, two siblings named Viserys and Daenerys Targaryen trying to crew up with some soldiers. See, their daddy was rocking the crown before Robert Baratheon, so them two kids thinking that throne is theirs. So Viserys allies with his badass mother named Khal Drago by slaying Daenerys' ass at him. As a wedding present, Daenerys get three petrified dragon eggs, primo sh since nobody done peeped the dragon in ages. Viserys always talking mad sh to Daenerys and slapping her up like he own her or something. But when he finally threatens Daenerys and her baby she got coming, Kyle just ices that hater. Later, Drago gets shanked in a battle, and some healers say she gonna help him, but girl just make it worse, and Drago gets so dead in the head that Daenerys just ended for him. All toe up, Daenerys start to burn her hubby's body with them three dragon eggs. Then she decide, f it, I'm gonna walk my ass over into that fire. Cause why not? When that fire done blazing, all that's left is Daenerys is chilling with three baby dragons sucking at those titties. The end. <laughs> Alright, let's start with the basics. Like you probably guessed from the series title, this book's strapped with images of ice and fire. Now a lot of them are gonna jump right on out at you. For example, that Stark crew, all iced out. The Stark motto is, winter is coming. And Ned's sword even called ice. Plus, we got them ice cold other brothers roaming around. Brrrr. On the fiery side, we got Daenerys chilling in flames and heading up a brand new posse of three fire breathing dragons. But we also getting some subtler shout outs to ice and fire. When somebody from the Night's Watch gets wasted by one of the others, the pale sword bit through the ring mail beneath his arm. The young lord cried out in pain. Blood welled between the rings. It steamed in the cold, and the droplets seemed red as fire where they touched the snow. But don't trip home, girl, cause that ain't all. We got some pretty tight symbols in the novel, too. My personal fave is the direwolves. When Ned and his children find the mama direwolf on page 18, Mama Dove got a foot of shattered antlers stuck all up in her throat. If you open up your eyes and peep the House Baratheon sigil, you'll see that they got a stag front and center, whereas the Star crew got a gray direwolf. So that wolf died from an antler, foreshadowing that old Ned Stark about to get his wrecked, and that House Baratheon gonna have something to do with it. Them direwolves also telling us a little something something about they owners. Bran say on page 21 that Jon Snow's wolf was the first to open his eyes, while the others still blind. Likewise, Jon Snow see a bunch of shit that other people don't. A bastard had to learn to notice things, to read the truth that people hid behind their eyes. Plenty more people's where that came from, son. Cause eyes and sight popping up all over a Game of Thrones. That badass Serial Pharrell say he the most throwed up warrior in town cause of what he call the scene. Opening your eyes is all that is needing. The heart lies and the head plays tricks with us, but the eyes see true. Look with your eyes, hear with your ears, taste with your mouth, smell with your nose, feel with your skin. Then comes the thinking afterwards. And in that way, knowing the truth. When the shit go down and you gotta go toe to toe with some hater, a real gangster don't just keep his heart in check, but also his mind, man. You gotta chill out, observe everything around you, and then you get a little taste of the truth. But if this book's showing us one thing, it's that ain't nobody got a lock on truth. Not even the realest thug of them all, Ned Stark. Homeboy puts the truth aside twice for the people he loves and pay for it with his head. As the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch preaching, the things we love destroy us every time. In a world where everybody backstabbing everybody on the reg, how's the brother gonna feel like he got any control over his destiny, man? Well, maybe the only power you can really count on is power over yourself. Tyrion dropping the same knowledge on Jon Snow. Let me give you some counsel, bastard. Never forget what you are, for surely the world will not. Make it your strength, then it can never be your weakness. Armor yourself in it, and it will never be used to hurt you. If they want to give you a name, take it. Make it your own, then they can't hurt you with it anymore. So take the power into your own hands and make sure to pre-order the Thug Notes book. For those of you that don't know, it's coming out in August, and it'll be the dopest breakdown of the classics you'll ever read for real. And hey, go check out another super smart channel called D News. And if you got Game of Thrones on the mind, check out that video on how inbreeding messes with your genes. Ugh, Joffrey. Oh, and one more thing. I just want to introduce you to the new host of a new show on Wisecrack. This is Ella Darling, and it's a Sovereign Side. They're awesome. Hey, the show's coming soon, so make sure to check them out. Can't wait to see you guys. Find yourself wondering about ancient history, maybe Greeks.
all the time. Maybe some Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little yeah. bit of French. I love French. <laughs> Parlez-vous français? <laughs> oui, oui.